anchors up, sells it full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm doing all right, Jared. Doing all right. How are you doing today? I'm, I'm doing okay. I don't know what happened, but uh, Austin got reported for spam by it, the chat because, bot. So when we when we do, I the, did when three, we, two, one clap. Yeah, and he he was trying to he was trying to type that along, and he typed too fast, and ah, uh, that's why. And spam and um and our sloop bot says, hey, you're you're spamming our our Discord Discord <laughs> sloopcast dot com. Uh, <laughs> Well done, Kyle. Well done. Get that ad in early. And since we're getting things early, let's get the new tradition that's also a good tradition. Ah, uh, Out of the is. way early. And let's, uh, you want to get to know our enemy? Sure. It is the Iowa Hawkeyes. Iowa Hawkeyes here. Uh, Coming into this game, three and one, one and zero oh in Big Ten play. Also ranked uh, very low in terms of uh, their passing offense for for the um, for the year right now. They're they're near near the far back backside of it uh, from from all the stats that we that we are able to research on Iowa. As we get to know Iowa here, uh, still a very, very strong defensive team here uh, so far playing uh, four games. Uh, but but to me, Jared, I, mm-hmm. I know I know that they've tried to they try to change some coaches to get better offense in here. But it feels like it's like the same Iowa for the past few years here. Kyle, my hot take for this episode is that I disagree with that sentiment. All right. I think they have, and, and and much like if you don't, if if you guys don't watch our our Scarlet and Gray episodes on Mondays, one you should. Two, one of the things we like to emphasize on that show is that we grade based off of expectations. We grade the defensive line filled with a bunch of five star guys more strictly than we grade the offensive line, who which has been one of the weaker points for Ohio state in recent years. So we sort of grade based off of expectations, right? So that's what I'm doing here. I want to, so, so before I say this, I want to say I'm grading based off of expectations. All right. I was often actually expectations, very low, <laughs> very low. All right. I was offense. Isn't that bad? Okay. I'm gonna let that sit there for a second. I was you offense. Know, it is a podcast, but <laughs> I, you get to do that to me. I was offense, kind of decent, kind of decent. They average. <laughs> this was supposed to be, and I, I took a look. I don't have it up currently, but I took a look at the Pick Six preview. Yep. Uh, preseason guide, and they had Iowa's offensive line as 16th in the Big Ten, and maybe. That's an issue. I mean, not. I mean, they only allowed four sacks, and they're currently, and this is makes them top ten in the country. Current yards per rush is at five point nine. Yeah, no, that that's good. Yeah, I, I really like their freshman, uh, Caleb Johnson. I think he's a really good running back. Really gets the really gets the team going here. Um, what is it? He has almost 700 yards in four games and eight touchdowns, averaging two touchdowns a game. Yeah, that's really good. I have no complaints about Iowa's running attack here, averaging 250 yards on the ground per game here. Uh, but it's it's the other side of it. It's it's the passing side that's uh, Not- still, still an issue. It's, 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 it's an issue. Yeah. No, no, no. It's an issue. Yeah. I mean, um, 500, 588 yards through four games. That's well. And by the way, I think I, that's, that's, that's not good, Jared. No, 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 it's not good. Um, I forgot to update those numbers. So let's just ignore those for a second. All right. Sorry. Um, the yards per pass, I, you know, I said, Hey, yards per run top 10 in the country yards. 
130, 130th in the country. That's not good. That's not no, good. Out of how, no. out of how many? Expert opinion. <laughs> Expert opinion. That is not good. They've always had defensive touchdowns. Everyone else can get defensive touchdowns too. Point is, is that they're averaging 30 points a game, almost, which puts them 57th in the country. Yards per game. 71st in the country. Again, I'm grading based off of a off of explanations here. I'm grading based off of the Iowa curve. The Iowa offensive curve. Bear with me. It's not saying that it's the best offense that mankind has ever seen. I'm not saying it's necessarily top half in the country. But Tim Lester who is their, their new offensive coordinator, has things, uh, let's just say, progressing in a good direction. Like he wasn't going to fix it in a year, right? Mm-hmm. What's, what's the graphic you put down in there in the chat, Kyle? What's the? Oh, no, I, I was, it was going to be my next yeah, comment I, here. I was yeah, just yeah. letting go, it. Go, go, go. All right. Um, very, very similar, very similar. I was very similar with, with another team that's kind of struggling passing as well too, uh, and that's Michigan. Both both ranked at the pretty much at the mm. bottom of the, the barrel. The Jim Harbaugh schools to... school of quarterback giving us, uh huh, Orgy and Cade McNamara is the Iowa quarterback who, if that name bears, because he used to play for Michigan. Yeah, 147 yards per game for for Iowa and 115. For Michigan, that's you. You cannot be you cannot be one dimensional. You cannot, um, especially especially in this day of age, you cannot be one dimensional at all. Kyle, is this a warm up game for Michigan? Can't they're pretty good for Michigan? Yeah, yeah. I they have a really good defense. They got no passing game. Got a pretty good run game. Rush stop. Yeah, no, I I think so. I think I think you're on to to something there. This is. It's a good test. This is a good test of Ohio State's offense and how how well they can they can go against a pretty stout uh, defense. I'll I'll say that Iowa's defense is deeper, I'll say, um, not as athletic, um, not as strong, uh, not not as strong on the defensive line. Although I think their defensive line is is good. Um, Led by uh, Ethan Herkett, and uh, I'm not going to try that one. Last name's Black. Um, <laughs> uh, but they're better at linebacker than Michigan. Uh, their linebackers yeah. are Jay Higgins and Nick Jackson, who were all four of those people. Like right down the middle of the defense, solid team. Uh, amazing, two amazing safeties, two amazing linebackers. Right down the middle, right down the middle, it's a really strong defense. Mm-hmm. Uh, dare I say, regular reason wise, best defense they're going to play this year. Points per game only allowing 18, 23rd in the country. Yards per game, 22nd, allowing about 300 a game. Yards per play, 5.2, 51st in the country. Yards per rush, only allowing 2.7 which was the 10th in the country and yards per not as good at 7.2, making them 69th in the country. Yeah, definitely, definitely some really, really impressive numbers here. And they'll, they'll, be, says, put to the te- oh, they'll be put to the test here. Uh, Mullings and Johnson, similar backs. I would say so. Mm-hmm. I would say so. Yeah. Did you see where Ohio state is ranked in terms of rush per yeah yards per rush on the defensive side? Where's that? They are averaging, letting up 1.8 yards per rush. Does that put them number one? That puts them number three. It it feels weird because at times Ohio State's run defense has felt. So- their, their first half, and we, we talked about this the past few weeks here, their first half. On scarlet and grade, more specifically, mm, yeah. Uh, the first half, it definitely seems like a bend but don't break type of defense, but. I think the um, it was one of the coaches. I forget which one it is. 
pretty much said that Ohio State's defense just smothers you and and you just have no way of breaking through. Ohio State just eventually just collapses and just shuts down the offense, which is I can pull up the numbers here and and show just how impressive from like maybe like half of the second quarter to the rest of the game, how stout of a defense Ohio State has has been here. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's the thing we've talked a lot about. Yeah, if you want to, you want to hear us talk more about Ohio State's defense and how yeah. it them goes, go listen to Scarlet and Grade on Monday. We talked about it a lot more in depth there. Um, right now, Iowa. Let's focus on Iowa. As I mentioned, Cade McNamara, former Michigan quarterback, currently the quarterback for Iowa. It's not terrible, but it's it's good. Um his performance, that is. Uh, throwing just under 63%. Kyle he only has 588 yards so far this year. Um, three touchdowns uh, and two interceptions. Only been sacked four times. So, Esquire points out in the chat, uh, Trey and Q both over eight yards per carry. So, three running backs in this game over eight yards per carry. But notably... State's running backs have the advantage of having a passing game to help them out. Caleb Johnson does not. And that, and that might be even maybe a more impressive number too, is, is with the lack of a passing, um, passing attack, he's still averaging over eight yards a carry too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, for sure. I mean, that's, that's exactly my point. Yeah. But what one thing, one thing that we've seen with, with teams that struggle passing, they tend to go to their tight ends more. And and uh, Kate has definitely gone to his two his main two tight ends, uh, um, 12, 12 for Luke, eleven for Addison for the for the year for hundred over one hundred fifty yard hundred sixty yards uh, between the two of them already this year. So I would I would expect I think this is going to be a, a good test for the linebackers. And we've seen recently here that. Especially that middle of the field seems to be open more, so it's really going to be a test for the Ohio State linebackers and for and for Styles to to lock down that middle of the of the field there. Yeah, uh, wide receiver Jacob Gill is uh, putting up pretty good numbers this year. Has over uh, or just about 150 yards on 13 carries, averaging over 10 yards a grab. Also, keep an eye out for Reese Vander Zach, um, or excuse me, Vander Z. Misread that. Uh, who also has uh, two? T- who has two touchdowns on the year and averaging? Austin said that only one receiver has had over 100 yards on the year. Uh, that may, yeah, that's that is true. Do we have one receiver over 100 yards this year? Yes. Correct, and that that is Jacob One. Gill. Yeah, but but a more impressive or maybe not impressive stat here is that is that this Iowa team has only thrown for for over a hundred yards in two of their four games. Yikes! Let, let me guess, um, Illinois State. And- yeah, Illinois State and Troy. That is correct. Have we sufficient our enemy? I think so. I think so. So with with that, we'll go ahead and take our first ad break here. Uh, uh, be sure to check out uh, thesloopcast.com to check out all of our different links, including our um, Patreon page, patreon.sloopcast.com, if you want to help support uh, Jared and I in this uh, podcast that we do uh, weekly here. It takes, it takes a lot of man hours for us to, uh, for Jared and I to um, to go and do this every week here. So if you want to help support us, head on over to patreon.thesloopcast.com or you can check out our merchandise, uh, merch.thesloopcast.com where you can purchase some of uh, some lovely merchandise uh, from us. Or 7071 if you want to find some cool designs that Jared made uh, about just some cool little uh, Ohio-related t-shirts as well. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. So... Uh, with that, we'll go ahead and take our first ad break and be right back. Yep, let's get into our predictions then, Jared. 
rule number six. Predictions. Yes, exactly. All right. First <laughs> off, Jared, Ooh, I'm going to let you speak here. So, <laughs> okay. Kyle's voice is struggling. Mm. So I'm a, I'm a, I'm a speak for, I'm a speak for Esquire, I think. Um, but why don't you go ahead and introduce, cause I can only keep up one tab at a time. Uh, why don't you go ahead and introduce each uh, topic and I'll, sure. I'll handle the, uh, the opinions of right. our sleep cat, Buckeye Esquire, who is our guest this week and is also down in the chat. Hi Esquire. All right. So Ohio State player to watch in this game. What did, what did he, uh, what does he have for Ohio State player to watch? Yes, Carnell Tate. Carnell Tate. Um, I don't want to give an explanation on that or not, but uh, I'm pers- personally, uh, I'm going to go with he's due, baby. He's having quietly a really good year as a, as a wide receiver. Um, I, I, the other two guys get a lot more, but he's still putting together a really nice season. Um, I'd go with Sonny Styles personally. Uh, uh, that's I, I think Ohio State is going to need to put together in their linebacking core this year, um, or excuse me, this week, facing a really good running back. You're going to have to load the box against the team. You know, there's been a lot of talk about Ohio State in their nickel versus three versus a four three versus a nickel, and to me, this game necessitates a 4-3. You know, people are like, oh, high state's better than the nickel. High state's better than the nickel. And I agree generally. I, I, I don't like ever taking Hancock off of the field. However, uh, I'm going to, this this game's going to necessitate a 4-3, more linebackers on the field. Uh, I'm going to go Sonny Styles here to to represent the linebackers in the Ohio state's player to watch Kyle. Who do you have? Uh, I had, I had um, styles was definitely one of my, one of my players to watch here as well. But, you know, I'm going to go because, because of maybe Ohio state's going to look at this and say, Hey, we need to get, make sure we have more guys up in the box there. Maybe to help out with some of that middle of the field there. I'm going to go with um, maybe a safety that comes up and plays up a little bit more here. And who does that better right now than Caleb Downs? I'm going to go, I'm going to go with Caleb Downs as my Ohio State player to watch to help protect that middle of the middle of the field a little bit better. Okay. Answer to that question is Lathan Ransom says. Austin, and that's fine, but, 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 Caleb, but Caleb Downs has been having himself a great, great year right now. Ransom is a better tackler than Downs, uh, but it's situational. Anyway, uh, right, enemy, what's next? Enemy player to watch. Uh, Esquire goes with Johnson, which, uh, you know, for focusing on Iowa's offense is objectively the correct answer. Um, personally, it's on the defense, and I'm a, I'm a cheap bit, and I'm going to go with Sebastian Castro and... Quinn Schultz, um, their safeties are going to be key this game. You know, they're going to be the ones preventing Ohio State from scoring from 80, 70, 60 yards out. They're going to be the ones forcing Ohio State to play instant first down. Yeah, a little bit. Consistent first down, grind it out ball. That's, you know, going to be up to the safeties. Um, whereas Ohio, you know, Ohio state likes to have big plays and they have big playmakers. You know, I, I think the play of Iowa's safeties are going to be key in keeping them in the game, key in forcing field goals, key in forcing Ohio state to play with a lot of consistency when, you know, they, like any other team would love to score from 60 yards out as often as possible. Yep. Uh um, I'm going to go with kind of my theme here. I, I like to stick to a, a theme here. I'll, I'll go with Luke Lachey as my player to watch here because Iowa's got to score points. Iowa has to score points, and who, who's the best person to do that? Um, that's 
it's Johnson and Lachey, I, I think, are the two that's going to need to get those critical third down conversions to keep the drive moving and potentially kick as many field goals as they can. To and hopefully, and hopefully the defense can prevent from Ohio State from scoring as much as they have been so far this year. Yeah, um, I, my yeah, All right, I, next, I'm, next I'll, just, I'll say this as far as some of Ohio State's defense was recently, Cade McNamara, not mobile, no, at all. Um, uh, he has eight runs on the season for minus 18 yards, and only half of those are sacks. So, yeah. Key matchup? Is that what's next? Yeah. Key matchup. Key matchup is our next one here. What what is what does our guest picker have here? The <laughs> state's front seven versus Caleb Hilton appears to be his answer. All right. Well, I, I'm, I'm going to stick to my theme still. Ohio State linebackers. Uh, versus Iowa, Iowa's tight ends. That makes a lot of sense to me. Um, I'm going to say it's Ohio State's wide receivers versus the secondary of Iowa. You know, we've talked to we've talked a decent amount about Castro and Schultz. Um, Deshaun Lee and Jamal Harris are their two top corners. These are also very good players. Iowa's defense is stacked. It might not be as purely athletic some playoff teams Ohio might see or as pure athletic as Michigan's defense. But if you're just looking for sound play, if you're looking for disciplined play, if you're looking for smart play, if you're looking for tough play, Iowa matches up against anyone in the country. Okay. All right. Uh, next up here, Jared, we have the spread. As CBS uh, Pickums uh, locked them in, Ohio State is a 20 and a half point favorite in this game. And I was try- trying to quickly look, but it is taking a while for me to get there. Um, I think that number stayed the same. I think it is. I, th- I think it's, I think it's about the same, same spread here. Yeah. It's still 20 and a half still. So. So it has not moved since CBS locked them in. Twenty and a half is is the spread here. What does our guest picker have? Guest picker has Ohio State to win, Ohio State to beat the spread, and a final score prediction of forty nine. Sorry, forty nine to what? Ten. To ten. All right. I also, I also have Ohio State to cover. Win and cover here with a with a final score of Ohio State uh, thirty five, Iowa six. Kyle, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. Uh huh. We have the same point. All right. However, slightly more pessimistic than you. I'm gonna go Ohio State. Turn. I saw a lot of people in the Discord saying, like, oh, that's free. Is it cutting again? Gosh darn it. It is, yeah. Um, uh, 31 to 10. 31 is to 10. That is a cover. Kyle, let's uh, do a hyper ad break. Let's. Hi, quick, super quick ad break. We're going to do a super quick ad break. We're going to go to uh, lessons over unders, and then we're going to end this so I can. Try and fix my audio so it's not screwed up for the next episode. This audio keeps cutting out, everybody. I don't know what's happening. Um, but we'll we'll figure it out. And here's that ad break now. All right, Kyle. Austin's over. Unders. Technical difficulty, please. Wait a minute. Hold on, Kyle. There you go. <laughs> I I have one of... I have one of these ready. However, there's no real style. Look, there he is. That exact one. (laughs) Because we like the Simpsons. I almost never use that, even though I probably should sometimes. Um, (laughs) 
Anyway, Austin's over under Kyle. All right, all right. Let's let's start them. Let's go through them here. I, Austin's over and under for Iowa. First off, he has Iowa punts at six and a half. I'm sorry. I'm floored by the fact that the over under on the number of episodes of the Simpsons that Austin has seen is apparently 0.5 and that we should take the under. Wow. I am floored by this information. I'm going to need you to repeat back whatever it is you just said. Sure. Iowa punts in this game over under six and a half. They are averaging five points. Point seven five a game. Over. Yeah, I'm going to go over as well. It, it just seems. Ah, oh gosh. I, being it's Austin over unders, I want to say I want to go the opposite way, but I, I'm going to I'm going to go over. I'll go over. Esquire, you're much closer in age to me. <laughs> like it's under it's I for Austin I at least understand it but anyway Kyle the chat's killing me right now next question please all right next question here Ibuka and uh Kakamirk catches at six and a half uh sorry say it again I'm sorry the Simpsons shade in the chat right now is, Ibuka. is yeah Abuka Abuka and Kakamirk six and a half six and a half catches um I'm gonna go I'm sorry but I'm just this purely as Abuka I'm just just purely looking at this I'm gonna go under yeah my my gut's under my gut's under with this one as well too I, I, there's there's so so many weapons for for Ohio State here, and may, maybe they may go a little more pass heavy in this game. Just if if they can't get the the run game going here, um, but I think I think they're going to spread the ball around a lot, which they have been so far this year. So I don't I don't see that um, changing in this game here. So yeah, I'll go under as well. Heck, gets two catches. Yeah, yeah, you're right. All right, uh, Camara pass attempts at 18 and a half. Call him Camara? Cade. Cade. Maybe, okay, maybe it's audio issues. I heard Camara, which is, uh, if he 18? were good, would be an awesome nickname, but he doesn't uh, deserve go, the nickname. I'm going to go over. I'm going to go over. I'm going to go over 18 and a half. I'm gonna go eighteen and a half. Is is uh Austin's over under for pass attempts? I'll, I'll go over on this one. He has he has not gone under nineteen this year. Yeah, which is how many? Which is how many he did against Minnesota last weekend? Yeah, so I mean, there's there's a couple ways to look at this. There's like he might need to throw more because if Ohio goes up early and scores a lot of points he might need to throw more but if ohio state's offense eats a bunch of clock that could limit you know time of possession for uh iowa which could hurt the numbers of of total throws i'm more towards the former so i'm going to go over up over as well right, jt and sawyer sacks plus ohio state interceptions so ohio state interceptions plus mm-hmm. sacks from jt and sawyer at 2.51 um i'm gonna, gonna go, go under i'm gonna go under i'm gonna go over i think i i think ohio state's good for the is that it's he's limited it to just those two that's what if this were just sacks it's interceptions i'd go over without hesitation okay. i think i'm still gonna go over but it makes it a lot tougher 
Mm -hmm. Iowa has more pro style passing scheme. That's more susceptible for sacks. I mean, you'd think so, but he only has four on the season. Caleb Johnson rushing yards at 78 and a half. I'll go over on this one. He's, he's going to get his touches. He's going to get his touches. So over. Yeah, I agree. Go over. If JT right. or Sawyer get a solo sack, you're in good shape. Or if they if they sack. Yep. Uh, Jeremiah Smith receiving yards at 91 and a half. I'm going to go. Un- I think I was doing what they can to limit big plays, which I think hurts his ability to get. I think if if Ohio, if my theory is correct and Iowa is successful or at least semi-successful in in shutting down big, plays, that's going to lean more towards a, a a Mecca Buka and Carnell Tate. So if it goes more towards a Car- Carnell Tate and a Mecca Buka, then I'm not gonna lean in that direction. I'm gonna say under. Yeah, I'm gonna go over. I'll go over here. He's in every game he had he's had over he's had 45 yards or has had at least one catch of 45 yards or or more except for last weekend against Michigan State so i think i think he's due for a for a really long um a really long catch and run so i'm i'm going to go over but if that's the case won't a mecca hit the over fallacy no i i think I think my issue with that number was more kick Merrick. I, I think Emeka gets it like exactly six. I think the running backs get a G Scott gets a couple. I think Carnell Tate gets a few. And it's not like Jeremiah Smith won't get receptions. He'll get receptions. I just don't think he's going to get that many yards. <laughs> All right, uh, and the last one here is Howard pass attempts M- minus Trey and Judkins carries at seven and a half. Okay, you're you're, you're getting you're getting really very <laughs> specific here, Austin. You're getting very specific now. So say it again. Number of come. number of passing attempts by Howard. Okay, and then subtract it by the total carries Trey and, and Judkins have. Okay. And that's seven and a half. Under. Yeah, I'll go under as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm I feel good about the under, as a matter of fact. Cause I think it could very easily I wouldn't be shocked. And like I would be, be only be kinda surprised. They've never hit the under on that. I think this, <laughs> unless in this case, there's only four data points, in which case it's not that strong of a word. Yeah. Can Iowa stop our run is the question. No. I think one will be very feast or famine. It'd be a lot of like minus one, zero, one, zero, two. 12, 15, 1, you know, I think it'll be one of those type of running games. Well, that's not true. He, he, it was under, there was the under, it was under in Marshall. He only, he only threw the ball 20 times against Marshall. (laughs) Okay. So not never. Yeah. 70 percent of the time and it was seven times against western michigan seven net and it was seven also in akron it's happened all but the michigan state game wow he's just shame, we need to on, start you. Fact shame on you austin we need shame to start fact you, checking austin. him yep i'm, I'm going to now <laughs> lying liar all right, Kyle. Is that was that the last over under? Uh that was. That was the last over under. 
that we have here. All right, all right, all right. Um, all right, that's it. That's the end of the show, I guess. Uh, we have a uh, fun announcement. Yeah, we did a live show with uh, Bleacher Report last year. So we we are also going to be doing that again a few times uh, this month of October. Uh, so after the Iowa game, uh, there will be a link to the Bleacher Report uh, live reaction to the Ohio State-Iowa game. So uh, be on the lookout for those links. We will try to share that out as um, as early as we can. And uh, come come hang out with us and come... Uh, Just- Chat, chat in there and and if you're in the dis if if you're in the discord server check out you know we'll drop the link in there in the discord server i think you can just go on the bleacher report app save it is your favorite team and i think you'll get a push for like an instant react show I'm really just gonna do a an episode of scarlet and grade that you can watch through the bleacher report app and as kyle pointed out next it's it's the next three right i don't think it's the next three i think it is i know it's it, i know it's three in this in this month here it is this weekend yeah the the weekend of the 12th yeah and the weekend of the 26th which i believe ohio state, that that is the bye week for ohio state right so it it's not the next three weeks it's the next three ohio state weeks Yes. So yeah. Uh, yep. It would be the Iowa, Oregon, and Nebraska game. Yes. Okay. There um. One important note I don't think we mentioned. A little bit more concerned about them is that Iowa's coming off of a bye week, which is not great for Ohio. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. I'm not scared. Kyle's not scared. The, where, where, where's this game being played at? Columbus. Okay. Okay. All right. That's the end of the show. Um, tonight's ending music uh, being brought to you by Save Escape, a Cincinnati based band. So, with all that being said, I'm going to try and fix these audio issues. We'll be back Friday for the Sloop Picks. So, with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beers, listen to local, and of course, support local podcasters. Once again, this is Saving Escape.